I researched all the literature on the occupational exposure of dentists to, to amalgam and ended up writing a paper as a result of that research that was published on exposure predominantly to particulate matter. As dentists drill out a filling, their uh, dental drill runs at about 400,000 RPM, if I've got my numbers correct. And it doesn't matter what it hits. It can hit stone, brick, stainless steel, dental amalgam or tooth material, and it sends a shower of micron size and submicron size particles everywhere. And there was literature actually that measured the amount of particulate matter um, in the airspace or the, the breathing zone of a dentist and dental patient during removals. And a researcher had studied this using mannequins into which they had put in fake teeth with fillings in them and then drilled them out and taken all the measurements while they were doing it. And the dose of particulate matter experienced by dentists, if they don't take precautions, is huge. It's way larger than the vapor exposure they get during the same process. Particulate exposure for a single filling delivers m micrograms of mercury, which in mercury terms is a lot. And um, this happens, you know, at the time, the average was around four to five fillings were removed by a typical dentist in any given day so that he could replace them or whatever. And uh, the exposure from that was me measured in micrograms per amalgam removed. Uh, and it was very, very interesting to, to be able to have the opportunity to research all of that. Granted, it was from a court case, but it was n new enough to be able to publish it in a scientific journal because they like to see new research. And no one had addressed that issue before. So in 2003, I published that article basically about the cons my concern for dentists taking absolutely no precautions when they're drilling out an old amalgam filling and it, the, the insertion of a new one provides minor exposure relative to the particulate load they get from drilling the old one out. And if they, even if they wear the typical surgical mask, they're designed to stop particles of around three microns in size or larger because that's the size of typical bacteria. And they're designed, they're, those masks are designed to try and prevent spread of bacterial infections and that sort of thing from person to person. Well, the particles of, mercury, of, of amalgam pass right through that mask because they're well less than three microns. They average around one and a half microns inside and go down to the submicron level.